All right, so good luck to everyone on that second challenge here on this March 10th episode of Model Monday Live. And we are now gonna take a look at an on-shape live solve. And this model actually comes from the Too Tall Toby practice models library. So I think I'm gonna just launch the app and do this live solve using the app. That way you guys can see kind of what the app looks like. But this is a pretty cool part. It's a machined part. It's called lever mount. So let me take a look here at twotalltoby.com. Here's the website, twotalltoby.com. And we're gonna choose, uh, first of all, to log in, create a free account, log in. And then we're gonna see down here, we've got this button that says get started. So I'm gonna click that button there. This is get started. And here we can see that we've got a repository of over 150 practice models challenges. Now, some of these challenges are free for anyone with a free account. So you can sign up for a free account. And then if you, you know, get through all those challenges and you really enjoy the app, or even if you just wanna support the channel, uh, you can sign up for our practice models premium where you can unlock the remainder of this library. But you can see here that down at the bottom, one of these challenges is totally free is this one, 250301. So I'm gonna click here to practice. We can see that so far 58 people have completed this challenge. So let's see if we can become number 59. It looks like the skills tested are the whole tool, the slot tool, and symmetry. So that sounds like a pretty good set of skills that we can learn here. My CAD system is on shape. My name is Nikola Tesla and my country is Serbia. So let's go down here to click here to begin and go. So the challenge here is what is the mass of this part in XXXX grams? And we can see here that we're gonna put in that mass. We're gonna put in that answer right down here. It's kind of cool. It is a true validation field. So if I type in one, two, three, four here and click to submit, it says that's incorrect. Your answer is incorrect. So when you're using the practice models app, you do have to get the answer correct in order to uh, earn your point on the leaderboard. So you can see here that uh, this model is it's kind of a cool model. Now, I know the clock is running, but I always advise my students that before you get started in the 3D CAD, it's a good idea to come up with a game plan of how you're going to model this part. And this is something that you'll get better at over time. But basically what you want to do is you want to kind of look at a model, whether it's a physical model or whether it's a, a 2D drawing, and you want to unbuild that model in your head and kind of think through how you might build it in 3D CAD. So for me, the first thing I'm gonna notice is that this model is symmetric. So there's a note down here that says center line symmetric. And so what that tells me is that I could just create half of the model to begin with. So my first sketch maybe will look like this. It'll come up, it'll come over here like so, it'll come down and then it'll close off like this. Now you'll notice here that this corner is rounded in the physical part, but I'm gonna make that corner sharp and then I'm just gonna add a fillet afterwards. And this is a, a really important lesson, which is you wanna really keep your sketches simple. So anytime you're working through CAD, especially if you're a newer user, you wanna keep your sketches simple. Now, maybe I'll include some additional geometry, like I could include this shape here and maybe even this tombstone shape in the very first sketch. And I think that's reasonable to include that geometry, but I'm probably not gonna include this slot up here. I think that's just gonna make too many tangency relationships. I'm probably not gonna include this fillet here. That's too many tangency relationships. Just try to keep your sketches simple and it'll make it much easier to lay out your geometry and get it to snap into place place. So when we're coming up with a game plan, one of the first things we want to ask ourselves is where should the origin be on this design? I think in the case of this model, I'm going to put the origin down here right at the bottom. And the reason for that is because the model is symmetric and a lot of dimensions seem to be coming from that location. This dimension here is kind of, you know, based off of that location, our sideways dimensions here in this top view are coming from that location. So I think that makes sense to have that be my starting origin location. And then the next thing you're going to want to ask yourself is, where or what will the first sketch look like? And we already talked about this a little, but I think my first sketch is gonna be maybe a shape like this, sharpen that corner there, like that, Just sketch half of it, maybe include this line here, maybe include this half of the tombstone shape as well. That's gonna be my first sketch. And then from there, you just wanna start thinking about what the remaining features in the model are gonna look like. So I think I'm gonna start out by extruding the, the main brick here. Then I'll extrude this L shape down here at the bottom, this little extra step at the bottom. Then I'll extrude this tombstone shape. And then once I've got that geometry extruded, I could add this fillet here, and that's gonna give me the concentric location of this slot here. So the, the slot you can see is concentric to that radius. So I really need that radius first before I can start drawing in that slot. And then maybe I could add this hole here 
And then from the top view, I can locate these counter bores. So add in these counter bores here. And then the final features that I'm going to add are going to be my fillets. Now, I know I mentioned that this fillet here has to come in first because this slot is based on the location of that fillet. But generally speaking, you want to save any fillets that you've got in your model to the end of the model. Um, that's important because it helps you not lose edge ID locations. And it's also important because it can sometimes help in the prototyping and mold making process if those fillets come last. So just generally speaking, save your fillets for last, especially if you're a, a newer user. So I know we took three or four minutes there to kind of come up with that game plan. But like I said, I think it's always important to start out with a game plan. But now that we've got that game plan, let's get into the 3D CAD here. And we're going to start by going to create document. This is in, I'm in on shape here. I'm going to create this document in the public space. So if you ever want to look up this document, you can just search for 250301 uh, space dash space lever mount. Create a public document here. Let me bring up my keyboard cam so you can see any of the cool shortcuts I'm using in on shape. And then I'm going to start out by going front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal to, S key, begin a line, single click this origin point, move over, and I'm just going to draw half of this model. So I'm going to single click in the background, let go of my mouse, and I'm going to type in 90 slash 2 to give me one half of that, that 90 dimension we see in the top view. Then I'm going to move my mouse up here, about 75 single click i'm going to type in 75 enter this is a this this model is a great example of where learning how to auto dimension can really streamline the process so currently i'm in a line command if i just take my mouse and put my mouse over this end point i can come off with a tangent arc so tangent arc single click let go of my mouse and i'm going to type in the dimension 70 for that radius move my mouse up here at kind of an angle make sure i'm getting tangent there single click and that's going to do it for that shape. I'm going to hit escape and then I'm going to S key, go into an arc command and create an arc here that just comes across like this. So just kind of an arc like that. Hit escape. Now this point of the arc is going to be vertical to the origin. So pick that point, pick the origin V for vertical. And this point of the arc is going to be horizontal to this point here at 75. So H for horizontal. And then I can use my um, S key command to add in a dimension here. And that dimension is going to be 115 for that radius. And then I think the final dimension I need to add here is just a dimension from this angled line to the middle of the model. And that dimension is going to be 70 degrees over two. So I really like using that slash two when I'm doing my, uh, uh, I really like doing that slash two when I'm using my double dimensions, when I know I'm going to mirror the whole thing. So now S key line, create a line here to close off this shape. Create another line here that comes across like so. And maybe I would create another line here that goes uh, from this, you know, starting here on this line, going up, whoops, line, starting here on this line, not at the midpoint, make sure you don't get the midpoint, but starting here on this line, going up, single click. It's really gonna come all the way up here to that same height as the 75. So single click, move my mouse back, single uh, without clicking, that transitions me into this tangent arc. I could kind of single click here on this line, and then I could give that a radius of 25. And so now all that's left is just to add a couple of quick uh, relationships. So I, we're going to make this point here horizontal to here. H, we're going to add a dimension here for this shape here. So that's going to be a dimension of 25. And we could even, if we wanted to, we could even add in the, the diameter hole here in this first sketch so that we could use that as we're extruding our other geometry. You are always trying to figure out where the balance is between like over complicating your sketch and and putting in enough information that you're going to save yourself time i think with a circle it doesn't add a bunch of tangency relationships it doesn't you know you don't run into the same challenges you might run into by adding a fillet here so i think adding a circle is okay there but i'm definitely approaching uh, my point of discomfort for the level of complexity of the sketch i personally really like to keep my sketches simple so now that we've got that geometry in place, we can S key extrude. I have customized my S key here in on shape to make some of these workflows go a little smoother, a little faster. So S key extrude. And now you see on shape picks up on the entire shape. Uh, it's pretty close to what I want. I think maybe I would just want to exclude uh, this region here. So exclude that region there. And that whole thing's gonna come out to, uh, maybe I'll keep this. I, I think it, it makes sense maybe to have that hole as an explicit feature. So we're going to bring this out to 25, enter, enter, and then we're going to show that sketch and we'll pick inside of this region here, here on the sketch. I just kind of rolled the model around to the backside, pick inside that region there, S key, extrude, tab, 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 40, or I'm sorry, 70, tab, 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 70, enter, enter. 
That gives us that 70 extrusion there sticking out the front of the model. And then we pick this region here, which is the, the tombstone region, and we can maybe even pick this region as well. And we could do S key extrude, and that is gonna be tab, 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 40, enter, enter. And then we could finish up by picking this region here, S key extrude, and this one is gonna be a remove. So it's the same command, extrude to add, extrude to remove. It's just, you pick a different tab here on the, uh, the property manager for that feature. So now we're gonna bring that out to a depth of through all and enter. And you might say, that's kind of weird. Why didn't you just include that in the feature? And certainly you could do that. But what I like to do is kind of keep my features explicit as well. It gives you a little more flexibility when you get into things like design changes and configurations. But what I will do is I'll go over here to the tree and I'll click on this first feature and shift N. And so I'll call that main base shape. And then I'll click on this feature here, shift N main foot shape. And then go to this next feature here, shift N tombstone shape. And then I'll shift N here, uh, hole in tombstone. So that way at a glance, I can look at the tree and I can figure out which, you know, which feature is being used to accomplish what in the design. Always good to rename your features. So I think I'm pretty much done with that first sketch. I'll hide that sketch now. I will S key fill it. Tab, 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 tab. This is gonna have a radius of 20. Enter, single click on this edge here and enter to finish that command. Pick this face here, S key, begin to sketch, N key to get normal two. I'm gonna create an arc here. This is gonna be a three point arc. So we'll create a three point arc that looks something like this. And then what we can do is we can take that arc and this arc up here and shift O for concentric. So now those two are concentric per the note on the drawing. Single click on this arc here, go into the flyout menu underneath offset and choose slot. And this slot here is gonna have a slot distance of 20, enter, enter. And then we're gonna take this arc here and this arc here and shift O to make those concentric as well. Nice fully defined sketch, S key extrude, remove through all and enter through all and green check mark. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna be basically ready to get in here and add those holes. So now we go to our, our uh, this face here, S key, begin to sketch, N key, get normal to S key, rectangle, single click here, move our mouse, single click again, let go of our mouse. And this is gonna be 60 over two, enter 55, enter. So that gives you the perfect location for that hole. Hit the green check mark and then jump into the hole command. And this is gonna be a counter bore. So we can just single click on this point here and then tab, 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 or you could even, you know, you could tab through all that stuff where you can just jump down here and pick on that dimension. Either way, it's gonna be nine, tab, 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 uh, 15, tab, eight, enter, enter, and there is our counter bore. And now we just have to add those final fillets. So S key fillet, tab, 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 tab. This one is gonna be 15. I'm gonna pick this edge here and then I'm gonna hold shift on my keyboard and I'm gonna press enter because what that does is it adds the fillet but it takes me right back into a fillet command. So then I can tab, 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 five and then I can pick these one, two, three edges so that the uh, the tooling has you know a, a filleted face down at the bottom there in those sharp corners. You don't want those to be totally sharp in the corners there. So now that we've got that geometry in place, the final step here is gonna be mirror. And for mirror, what you do is you pick this body here and then you can press uh, into this box here, mirror plane, and you can pick this face here as well. And so we hit the green check mark and there we go, there's that mirrored part. Now, what I like to do with that mirror command a lot of times is I'll go, uh, or with the, not, not with the mirror command, with the part itself, is I'll go here and I'll right mouse button and from the right mouse button, I'll choose assign material. And then from assigned material here, I'm gonna to go to the Tutal Toby custom material library and I'm gonna make that plain carbon steel. And then the other thing that I'll do a lot of times is I'll press P, which will hide all my planes and I'll right mouse button on the name of the part here and I'll go to edit appearance and kind of get this to match up with what we're seeing here from the customer. So it looks almost like it's a, you know, it's like an aqua green here. Yeah, that looks pretty close there. Maybe a little, little bit more on the green side, but there we go. Now we're matching up with what the customer gave us uh, when they gave us this job. The customers always like it when you use their part colors. So now that we're finished with that, we can click on this uh, display mass and section properties. And we're gonna click here on the part and we're coming up with a mass of four, four, five, three, 
Rams. So if we come back here into the Too Tall Toby Practice Models app, we could type in 4453 and we could press enter. And oh yeah, congratulations. This answer is correct. We did it. And so now we see here that the model answer is 4453. The elapsed time was 12 minutes and 55 seconds. And upon submission, you'll be awarded one point on the community scoreboard. So we're going to say submit. And when we roll down here, we can see now 59 people have completed this model. And we can see we get some additional analytics down below here. So it looks like the average time for this model was 1656. We did it in 1255. Yes, awesome. So I always love it when I get faster than the average time. That's always what I'm going for. But of course, if you did come in a little slower or you wanted to improve your time, you could use the try again feature here. And that way you'd be able to get a faster time. So I'll take that video and I'll post it. And that way we'll be able to see that video here in the community tutorials. If you ever finish one of these challenges and you want to make a YouTube video about it, this is a great way to share with the community and help uh, more people in the community see how to model these parts if they get stuck. FPV Kevin in the chat says, GGTTT. Ah, thank you so much. Very much appreciated.